Hello, my babies. It's Michelle Visage, and welcome back to another episode of What You Packing. And today we have our darling Mayhem Miller is here. Hi. Hi, baby. What's up? Now, of course, I've known who you were from around the way. Yes. Because you're an around the way girl. Yeah, all the way away. From Los Angeles, <laughs> but where did you grow up? I grew up in Riverside. So you are from California. Yeah, I'm a California girl. Born yep. and bred. Born and raised, won't ever leave. You're from the IE. IE, yes, representing. I love it. <laughs> you fought for a long time to get on RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes. How many times did you audition? Too many. <laughs> <laughs> Countless. I, I don't even remember how many times I've auditioned. I, I know ever since uh, season three. Uh, season two. You mean the real season one? No. I mean, I had to say it. Well, you said it, not me. Uh, I just had to say it. And then how'd you get mixed up with all these drag race clowns? Just through work. Because you're really good friends with Detox, you're really good friends with Morgan. Delta. Raven. Raven, Chad. The list goes on and on and on and on. The LA girls. All the LA girls. And then some of the out of town girls too, I'm really close with as well. Every time the girls come into town, like I get to work with them because I work in all the shows. I run most of the shows here in California. So. We all have like a good working rapport, and then that's how I got really close with a lot of the girls from the show. You auditioned all these times. Yes. What do you think was different about your audition this year? I liked the audition this time. I was watching my tape before I sent it, and I was like, I like this tape. Compared to my other tapes, I was like, this one I felt like it really showcased who I was as an entertainer as a whole, when the other ones kind of lacked a little bit. And looking back at it, I'm like, mm, I wasn't. Did they feel even. too overproduced, and this one felt like this real? felt organic, like it came from out of me. <laughs> I felt like I birthed this this audition tape. And the one thing that was different from the rest of them was I did this one on my own. I took off of work two weeks, and I was like, I'm gonna make this sacrifice, it's gonna hit me in the pocket. Two weeks to make your tape? Yeah. I, wow. I was like, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna make sure everything is right to what I want. And I was happy with it because it got me here. <laughs> Advice for the kids that are doing theirs? I would say take the take the time to do it right. Sell yourself, but don't try to sell something you think that they want to see. Was it everything you hoped it would be? It really was. It really was. And even though I went home sooner than I wanted, it really pushed me to a place that I thought I would never go. I was going to ask you if it was more difficult than you thought it would be. Oh my God. Because you obviously know the girls, so you obviously know stories. The, the girls all give me insight and they're like, okay, like do this, do that, you know. And I thought maybe I was coming in with a little bit of an edge over the rest of the girls. And then I got here and I was like, oh no, what everyone told me is out the door. I'm on my own and I have to figure this out. 100%, you're 100% on your own. If you were to do it again, what would you what would you do differently? Nothing. Really, you're happy with everything that I'm you happy did. with what I did. Like, of course, you know, I wish I would have stayed longer. You know, I would really wish I got to all the way to the end, but and overall, looking back, I'm like, I'm proud of what I did. I'm happy with what I did. I'm comfortable with it. You know, I, I, I learned a lot about myself. That when I think I have a limit, there isn't one. There's still more time and more. There's more to go. Go, go, go far. Go as far as you think, and then go more. Who did you um, connect with? I had a good time with all the girls. I love that. But Vixen, me and Vixen were always. Da, 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 da. Are you really <laughs> gossipers? Oh yeah, we had a good little kiki every day. I love that. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some of these beautiful looks. This one is gorgeous. This one? Yes. Oh yes. Who did that for you? Uh, my friend Tony Maynaz here in LA. I love a good gown situation. That is my my thing. When I'm thinking of drag, I think Diana Ross, mahogany. I want glamour oh, and. Honey. That, so I was like, all right, let's go for a red carpet moment here and You're classic You're always beautiful in drag. Thank you, you know how to turn a look. You really do. Thank you. And don't let a challenge specific look make you think that look wasn't turned because guess what? You'll be performing that probably for the next year in that outfit. In that <laughs> so get used to it, Chocolate Judd. Let's oh talk my about this middle one. This one is Thatchwork, um, Delta's husband. Yes, it is. Davey. He made this one for me and I was like, same same situation. I'm like, I just want a good gown. And would you wear your copper eyes with that one too? Oh my God, yes. Yes, honey. Oh yes. What color hair? Um, I would go with a, a good light brown, the maybe honey. with a highlight. Ooh. And I love her behind me. I was thinking very cutesy with that. I wanted to go retro. It's but a neoprene but, fabric? Yes, it is. Yeah. I love me a good neoprene. Same. Tell me what you learned about yourself in this competition, Mayhem Miller. The biggest thing I learned was to share myself. I kind of get closed in and don't let people in. And 
Being in this experience, when you're around people that you don't know, you're away from your familiars and your comfort zone, you kind of want to be like, oh, I don't know, I want to tiptoe around people because you don't know who they are, how they'll react with you. And in retrospect, I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish I would have gave more to the girls and showed, showed them who I really was because I didn't want them to have a perception of me of what they've seen on social media already or through YouTube. I want them to actually get to know the real me. Yeah. We need to get to know you to root for you. If we don't know you, all we're rooting for really are looks. Yeah. And you can only get behind a look for so long without the personality shining through. After the fact, I was like, oh man, I was like, I'm really funny and I'm really lovable and stuff. And I'm like, why am I not like being bubbly like I normally am? And I'm like, well, maybe I need some vodka. That's what I should have did was sneak some vodka into my bag when I got here. Well, don't they give you some alcohol? Not enough. <laughs> it's never enough for not you enough. I need a little, thirsty. I, yes, girl. Very thirsty. I know. But Mayhem, I just want to say thank you for everything that you've Thank given you. us. Your performance and all those things you do with people and on stage and your love of the community and giving back to the other queens and the kids, it, it precedes you. So you're gonna be booked for the next however knows how long. And, and I'm so glad you're part of this legacy now. And thank you, I wish you all the best. Thank you Helen. so much. And thank I'll see you. you at the club, girl. Oh, we gonna have a party. Okay, can't wait, thank That's you. That's what's up. <laughs> and thank you guys for joining me for another What You Pack In. I will see you next time, kids. Bye. Hey, squirrel friend, when one video ends, just open up another one. It's called binge viewing. Go ahead. I support you.